Right, okay. Um, so let's recap a little bit on what we covered in the morning. Um, let me see. Right, this one. So let's directly look at uh, Alamotis as GPC. Right, okay, um, so in the morning we talked about uh, Alamotis SCPC. Uh, so this scheme used uh, two transmission antennas and then two receive antennas. Uh, let me change your color. This is this better? Maybe right. Okay. So two transmit antennas and two receive antennas. So transmission pattern is like this. Um, so uh, the reason we have this transmission pattern is because uh, we want the transmission pattern to be uh, an orthogonal matrix, which means the Hermitian transpose multiply uh, of, of X multiply X would be a scale of identity matrix. You can extend this by yourself uh, to verify if uh, if it's uh, orthogonal or not. All right. So uh, so basically, if if it's orthogonal and if, for example, x one and x two are q plus k. So the power of the signal is uh, unity one, right? Uh, then uh, this this thing here, so x Hermitian transpose Hermitian transpose multiply x will be exactly identity matrix, which is uh, one zero zero one. Okay. So for the um, for the general memo form. We have y equals uh, so received signal equals uh, this is fitting matrix. This is what you transmitted, and this is noise. Uh, they, uh, this memo form faithfully represents what happens in the uh, for the transmission, and then what happened during the uh, during the fitting of uh, uh, what happens when there is fitting channel. So you, what you transmit is uh, this pattern. However, we don't always need uh, this form. Um, we alternatively we have another equivalent form. We want this form because we want to establish the relationship between y1, y2, and x1 and x2 without repetition of uh, x1, x2 in the previous uh, form. So here we uh, we transform uh, the fading matrix as a uh, orthogonal uh, matrix. So we have, uh, uh, the re so, so the target is to detect x1 and x2 based on y1 and y2. And now we want to cancel the effect of fading. How do we do that? We do a correlation operation, which is Hermitian transpose of uh, the fading uh, matrix. So our purpose here is to cancel out the effect of fading. So let's extend uh, this thing, and it become uh, a scaled diagonal matrix and uh, this is only power. All the non-zero elements are only power. And uh, if we put this to uh, if we put this uh, into uh, into this uh, correlation operation, what we get is uh, say Z one, Z two as decision variables, um, and uh, X one and X two was what you transmitted. 
and you have a diagonal matrix here. So if you is if you separate uh, this uh, equation, what you get is Z1 is only related to X1, and Z2 is only related to X2. So you have uh, uh, so this is equivalent to transmitting X1 and X2 separately without any interference. Um, and then if, if you if you have more than one receiver tenors, what you get is uh, 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 for the general mammal for the general mammal form, you have a bigger uh, fading matrix, you have a bigger received signal matrix, but your transmission pattern is the same. And then when you when you derive the equivalent form to establish the relationship between X1, I2, and uh, the output signal. You first put a uh, model, the receive signal model for each receive antenna, and then stack them together. And you get a really large Y and a really large H. That's what you get in your coursework. But it's still no trouble because we, uh, we, if we want to cancel out the effect of fading, we still need to do correlation. And uh, the big H is uh, constituted by uh, H for each receiver tenors. And for each one of them, the emission transports of that uh, component matrix multiplied by that component matrix is an identity matrix. So in the end, you get summation of uh, all the received uh, uh, signal model. So uh, it's equivalent to uh, the previous page when we only have one receive button. So I have to emphasize once, once again here that there are notation inconsistencies. So the size, uh, let's Go back here. So the uh, so this supporting document that you can you can see from the course website is uh, is in line with the slides uh, here actually. So when we use general MIMO matrix form here. Uh, the the format is y equals h x plus n. So th this format is in line with uh, slides. However, you need to uh, you need to be careful that in your coursework document, the format is uh, another form which is x y equals uh, let me see. So yeah, it's y equals x h plus noise. So can anyone tell me what's the relationship between these two? Uh, so the relationship between these two is uh, this one here, the whole the whole equation is the uh, transpose of uh, this equation. They are exactly equivalent, but uh, uh, in, in here all the rows become columns. So um, I'm not sure if that's clear. So if, you, if when you use uh, this format, Uh, you can still follow the same uh, same steps that I showed you in the slides and uh, in the yeah in the slides and also in uh, uh, in this supporting document. Um, but uh, you need to be careful that all the 
all the x should be x tra uh, transpose and all the h big h should be uh, should be h transpose um i'm not i'm not sure if that's confusing or if that's uh, clear to you uh, I can I can explain from another angle if uh, that's not clear. If you give me some feedback. So let's look at uh, look at the difference between slides and coursework. Once again, this is this is not an error. Um, so f when you read from different sources, especially for example when you read on uh, either Wikipedia or uh, research papers they sometimes they they, ha they they have different notations but they are trying to follow the same logics so this is not a mistake um and they are expected to be able to uh, transform uh one 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 model into another model um so let's go back to slides for a little bit so this is slides. So you can see that in in the slides, uh, the the memo's receive signal representation is y equals h x plus n so let's mark here that h is uh, size of n times m we have uh, we have m transmit we have m transmit antennas and n receive antennas and then the element in h is uh, something like this and then let's look at the coursework So in the in the coursework, so format is y equals x times h. So it's the other way around. Um, so for example, if the size here for h is p times q, then original form uh, in the slides it will be like q times p. So you can see uh, notations, they are all changed, but you should be able to transform uh, uh, from one form to another form. Um, I actually have to go a little bit faster now, otherwise we wouldn't be able to have a question and answer session. Um, so yeah, in the morning, uh, the first I'll give you is uh, uh, the example you get from this document is to use two transmit alternatives. Right, to transmit antennas. Uh, where is it? So the example you get is uh, only activate uh, one user and uh, use two transmit antennas over two time slots. Uh, so the first step I recommend you to try is uh, to use four transmit antennas, and you should be able to uh, improve the performance for just one user. So after the first step, you should be able to improve the performance of uh, the first user, but you still have the other users uh, deactivated. Um, the second tip I give you in the morning is uh, when, you, when you activate all the users, you will have interference again. So you need to do interference mitigation. We didn't cover that part yet in the morning. Uh, I'm going to cover that uh, really quick based on slides. Um, so if, if you feel a little bit confusing, uh, you need to uh, listen back to the session in the morning and also uh, look at uh, the supporting document I gave you in line with uh, the slides. 
and then compare the difference between slides and the coursework. And then when you when you uh, when you decide to use uh, uh, STPC using four transmit antennas, uh, you need to follow the same steps as I showed in the supporting document to work out why there is no interference between the four antennas. All right, so. No, um, we have six users for your coursework. So when, when you have multiple users, um, it will be like this. So we set in the morning by using STBC. We uh, design, uh, we try to uh, design the transmission pattern in a way that uh, the signals are orthogonal to each other, so there is no interference. As a receiver, you do a little bit uh, signal processing, and then the signal detection is uh, as if there is no interference between antennas, among antennas. Uh, that, that is STBC design. However, now you have multiple users, no matter what you transmit. Um, you cannot uh, design, you, you cannot uh, uh, demand different users to uh, coordinate and uh, transmit uh, redundant signals among each other. You can transmit redundant uh, symbols within one user. So you have four antennas for each user. You can use uh, four by four STBC. So you kind of transmit redundant, redundant information within uh, the signals of uh, one user. But when you have six users, each user would transmit a four by four matrix. So in that way, they will interfere with each other. So they will all adapt together. Once again, you need to be careful that uh, in the coursework, uh, the representation is uh, x multiply h, so the other way around. So you only need to swap uh, the rows and the columns, um, all the steps are the same. So what do we do now? We have interference. We cannot avoid interference now. What do we do? So if we put uh, all the users uh, fitting matrix together and all the users transmitted signals together, we get in this form. Once again, your, your coursework is y equals x h plus n. So you need to be careful about that. Uh, so just swap uh, rows and columns. Uh, the, the steps are the same. So we have interference now. What do we do? The first step is still the same. It's correlation. So we want to cancel out the effect of the fading. What do we do? We multiply the Hermitian transpose of the fading uh, matrix. And then we get this R. Originally for STBC, when it's only one user. So for STBC, when we only have one user. Uh, in my supporting document, you can see that Hermitian transpose of H multiplied by H, but in the STBC form, this equals to a scaled version of, of I. So there is a sc scalar here, but it's an identity matrix. However, so, so, so in this case, there will be no interference. However, now you have six users you have a uh, very different H. When you uh, do correlation operation, this R here is no longer an identity matrix. So correlation operation itself is not enough. So you need to do another further step, which is decorrelating uh, operation. So you need to uh, 
uh, you need to uh, evaluate the inverse of R and then place it on the after the correlation step. So first you do a you do correlation operation, try to cancel out the effect of fading, but uh, it's still not canceled out yet. So how do you cancel out the whole matrix? You do matrix inverse and then place it before uh, this. And then what you get here is a decision variable, uh, sorry, decision matrix. You use this decision matrix to uh, directly decode what was uh, transmitted. Let's look back to the coursework. So here, what you are asked to do um, is uh, you have six users you have six users. For each user, you have four antennas, right? Um, and as a receiver, you have six antennas. So for each user, you transmit uh, uh, signals over four antennas, over four uh, time slots. You have six users, so you stack them together. And then they go through, uh, they go through this uh, fading, um, it's a big fading matrix. So they will have interference. So you have receive signal in this form. Uh, what to do next is uh, uh, follow the slides. So you need to do correlation operation and then decorrelating operation. So you need to multiply, um, you need to multiply um, uh, the Hermitian transpose of the fading. But be careful where, where do you multiply because this is uh, y equals x h uh, plus n. But in the slides is y equals h x plus n. So in the slides, it's always correlation uh, operation is uh, to use this times y. But here it's the transpose. So you need to uh, swap the order. And then after correlation, what you do is decorrelating. Okay, so after decorrelating, what you get would be a, deci a big decision matrix, which is in a re relationship uh, directly related to what you transmitted by all the six users, and then a big equivalent noise. And then what you need to do is try to decode based on uh, decode x based on z. You need to change a lot from the uh, MATLAB code. Um, so don't, don't constrain yourself uh, to the MATLAB code because the MATLAB code is a single user case where after signal processing you don't have interference. But your coursework here is you have six users eventually, so you have interference. So what you do is you need to mitigate the interference. So as I said in the morning that uh, you have three tips. One is how to use STBC. Um, with four antennas. Uh, you, can, you can search online, there is a Wikipedia page as well, uh, which offer you some options. Uh, another, another thing to clarify is not all the STBC, so STBC with four antennas. Um, maybe let me share my screen and we can look at the Wikipedia page together. So if you look at uh, space-time block code, you have 
um, uh, this case is uh, how to use two transmitter antennas. And then you have uh, examples of how to uh, use four transmitter antennas. Um, so for these two cases, uh, all the three cases here using four antennas, the transmission pattern is orthogonal, strictly orthogonal. So if you follow um, the steps that presented in my supporting document, then you will see uh, you'll arrive at similar um, uh, final step where you only detect uh, one symbol based on one decision variable. So in the end, you have z equals to something x plus noise. Um, but there are also other STPC types. For example, uh, I was given an example like this. This is not strictly orthogonal. It is called cosines orthogonal. Um, so if you use this code, um, you wouldn't be able to uh, arrive at the same uh, final step as what we did in the morning. But you can still use this one. I emphasize that you still can use this one uh, for the coursework. Because when you use uh, when you use um, uh, when you have uh, six users, you have interference anyway. So what you do is uh, to do decorrelation decor and then do uh, oh, sorry do correlation and then do decorrelating. So uh, Hermitian transpose of the fading and then do matrix inverse and then uh, decode this x. Uh, they speak X as a whole. Um, I'm not sure what more am I allowed to say. Okay, the third, uh, the third tip um, is if you want to improve further. So after. So you got first user. Uh, if you use four antennas the performance of the first user would improve. And then if you activate all users and then do a correlation operation and decorrelation operation to mitigate interference, you'll get all the six users, they all have BR similar to this. And then if you want to improve the performance even further, what you can do is uh, the third tip I gave you was error correction code. Um, so there are a lot of uh, examples of uh, error correction codes. Normally for error cor correction codes, there is block code or convolutional code. And block codes are, si are simpler. Convolutional codes are more complicated. Uh, you, can, you can choose one and then search in my lab. Uh, there is normally built-in function or for some cases, uh, it's quite easy to implement anyway. Um, so, uh, so you can search in my lab uh, library to see what you, you uh, what you uh, what you want to use. But that's not compulsory. So the important thing is you have all the six users have a BR drop like waterfall, and then you can do something else to improve the performance uh, as. Uh, Oh, I didn't share, did, 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 did I now share my screen? So I didn't see in the tip in reply. So I didn't see my screen. RG sh was showing you. Let me share my screen again. So yeah, I was showing you a Wikipedia page on error correction code. Um, so there are different options. Um, there is block code and convolutional code. You can look at them and uh, to see if, uh, if you want to improve your performance even further. Um, so some of them are already built in, in a MATLAB library. Um, 
so you can you can search my my library and see what you can do and also um also very important to note here that eventually what you submit for your coursework are your programming code and report and the figure so if if you do uh if you do incorporate error correction code then you need to make sure that uh it's it's uh written in your uh functions uh transmitter uh, function and the receiver function in the in the format that's allowed by um by the code that you are given so basically uh when, after you upload this uh programming codes i will be running them on my computer if if i can reproduce uh the same result as you show uh in your report then you get uh, the corresponding mark but if it doesn't run sometimes if you put in a very complicated error correction code if it doesn't run then um uh you you receive a penalty so i will stop here for a moment uh i will stop recording as well um you are free to ask me any questions uh you have um but my answer will be uh stick to the slides and uh, the coursework uh instruction and if you have any further questions you can refer back to uh my talk in the morning and the supporting document on the course website